Welcome to the Science Asylum. I am Nick Lucid. The question we're answering today, why do things float? It has to do with densities, right? OMG, our chemistry class is still pushing that nonsense? There are only three possible reasons this misconception continues to be spread by science teachers. One, they don't understand it. I'd like to think they do as scientists, but who knows? Two, they don't think you can understand it. Let's face it, quite a few teachers and textbooks feel this way. Luckily, I do not. And three, they're traditionalists. This is how it was taught to them, so that's how they're gonna teach it to you. This act of stubbornness is a gross violation of what science education is supposed to be. I think it's time we put it to rest. But first, we need to know why density isn't enough to explain floating. Density is always given as a mass per volume, where mass measures how much stuff is there, and volume is how much space that stuff takes up. So it sort of measures how well a substance takes up as little space as possible. Now density can vary a little bit with temperature, so the examples I'm about to give you are at room temperature. Copper is 8,960 kilograms per cubic meter. Aluminum is 2,740 kilograms per cubic meter. Glass is just under that at about 2,500 kilograms per cubic meter. Water is 998 kilograms per cubic meter, which we usually round to 1,000 to keep it a nice round number. Gasoline, 730 kilograms per cubic meter. And last but certainly not least, mercury sits at about 13,600 kilograms per cubic meter. Holy Mercury, Batman! I know, right? That's just crazy! Larger numbers for density means the substance is better at fitting into a small space. Experiment time! I'm going to place this piece of ice, skull, into this glass of cold water. Bam! It floats! I can even push it into the water, and when I release, it floats back up to the top. Yeah, 917 is less than 1,000, so it floats. Gah! That's a nice trick, but what happens if you replace the ice with Ninja Ducky? Oh, Here's the problem. Ninja Ducky is made of soft rubber, which has a density of about 1,100 kilograms per cubic meter. That's 100 bigger than the value for water. So the density rule says Ninja Ducky should sink. Debunked. Also, if you did this experiment in space, you could put Ninja Ducky anywhere in the water and he wouldn't move. Yet he still has the same density up there. Floating isn't actually about density at all. It's about weight and pressure. Weight is how much Earth pulls down on things with gravity, which is a very familiar concept to most of us. Now let's see. Ninja Ducky is about 13 grams or so. That comes to a weight of about 0.03 pounds, or one-eighth of a newton. When you place him in the water, his weight pushes some of that water out of the way. See? He submerged a little. However, the water has weight too, so now Ninja Ducky and the water are in a battle, battle for, for supremacy, supremacy to occupy that space. The heavier one will win. In this case, that's the water, and Ninja Ducky floats. Pressure comes in when you want to be a little more mathematical. That's usually stated as a force distributed over an area. We can represent that with a bunch of little forces, like the ones around this ball. Notice the forces are bigger on the bottom than they are on the top. This is because pressure increases with depth. Skeptical? Consider this scuba diver. The pressure on the diver is due to the weight of the water above. As the diver goes further down, there is more water above them, and therefore more pressure. Okay, back to the ball. We can add all these little forces together, but we have to be careful about direction. So we'll split them all into two pieces. A quick look at the horizontal pieces and you can see they all cancel each other. The vertical ones don't cancel because they're bigger on the bottom. They push more up than they do down. So adding them together results in this, which is called a buoyant force. According to Archimedes' principle, the buoyant force on an object is always equal in strength to the weight of the fluid being displaced by that object. In this case, the fluid is the water and the object is Ninja Ducky. Remember, we said they were in a battle for supremacy. However, in Archimedes' principle, the fluid and object could really be anything. It doesn't even have to be an object that floats. This bowling ball has a buoyant force on it too. The ball just happens to be heavier than the water, so it sinks. So the next time someone tells you floating is because of density, make sure to correct them. Things float because of weight. We don't want to keep perpetuating that horrible myth. So what's the coolest floating experience you've ever had or seen? Please share in the comments section. And until next time, remember, it's okay to be a little crazy.